You've opened the door to the janitor's domain, a broom closet full of wonders. Beyond the plungers, brooms, and unknown items of disgust are memories of the past. The memories you are about to hear are not for the faint of heart. The memories are meant for mature audiences only. Listener discretion is advised. Prepare yourself for Tales from the Janitor. Did the last janitor ever take out the trash? This is just from the honeymoon suite, too. Oh, so many more rooms to clean. It's a good thing I'm wearing gloves. Wait, is that... Oh, jeez! That is so gross! Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Eureka, you found it! Hello again! I'd shake your hand, but even I don't want to touch what I'm touching. <laughs> now, oh, what, what's that? Oh, thank you, thank you. That would have been embarrassing if that was still stuck on me. Anyhow, welcome to the only state to have a Greek motto. I bet you didn't know that. The hotel where we are today is one of many prized possessions of the state. Many unique stories feature the Cecil Hotel as their centerpiece. Since her construction in 1927, the hotel has been plagued with unfortunate and mysterious circumstances. It has an unparalleled reputation for the macabre. At least 16, yes, 16 different murders, suicides, and unexplained events have taken place in this piece of history. During the Great Depression, there were six suicides. People took poison, shot themselves, slit their own throats, or simply jumped out of the window. So much death for one single location, huh? In 1944, a young woman, ah, I'm doing it again, aren't I? Anyway, the Golden State has a bunch of weird history connected to it. So, why not get started with the Santa Lucia Mountains. <laughs> It sure is really nice up here. Yeah, it really gets us away from the hustle and bustle of the city. This beats sitting in an office building all day, serving coffee. Try teaching. Your jobs will look like dream jobs. I thought you were retired. Oh, I am. But I still have nightmares. <sighs> I'm glad I don't have kids. Hey, I'm available, you know, if you want to try. Oh, stop it, Benny. I don't think your wife would like you talking like that. Oh, we don't need to tell her. <laughs> so how far are we going? There's a flat spot up ahead. We could set up camp there. I'm starting to get hungry anyways. Good. I need to free the snake anyways. Why can't you just say I have to use the bathroom like a normal person? Because I don't have to go to the bathroom. Then why did you say you have to free the snake? Because there is a snake that has bit my boot and it's still hanging on. Oh, we could have snake for dinner. More like a snack. Oh, that's just a little baby snake. You should keep it as a pet. I already have one snake. I don't need two. <laughs> yes, but this one at least has a brain. Quit it, you two. We're coming up on the area where we can set up camp. <sighs> this view is just breathtaking. I'll get some wood. I guess I'll start making dinner. No, I got this. You relax and enjoy the view. Ooh, that was really good, Joe. What's your secret? <laughs> you probably put the snake in it. Where is that snake anyway? I let it go when I was getting the firewood. So, really, what is your secret? No secret. I put salt in it. Hey, 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 guys. You want to hear a story? Do we have a choice? 
No, not really. <laughs> Go ahead, Benny. I'll start cleaning up. Don't worry, I'll listen. This might be a scary story. Just letting y'all know. Just tell the story already, Benny. On a dark night, a young man like me was walking home. On a dark, deserted street, he passes by the gates of a small cemetery. Once he passes the gates, he has this feeling that he's being followed. Suddenly, he hears a bump behind him. Afraid to turn around, he picks up his pace a bit. Bump, bump, bump. The bumps continue getting louder and louder. He turns around and sees a coffin bumping down the road behind him. Bump, 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 bump. He starts running for his life, but the coffin keeps on coming, increasing its pace to match his own. Soon, getting tired from the running. Oh, oh, he grabs a trash can and throws it at the coffin. Yeah! Clank, 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 clash, 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 clash. Unfazed, the coffin keeps coming at him, getting closer and closer. Finally arriving at his house, he sees an axe resting next to his wood pile, and he grabs it, throwing it at the coffin. But it simply bounces off. Ka-ting! The man rushes up the stairs, stop, 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 and gets inside the house. But to no avail, as the coffin simply crashes through the door. He runs upstairs, bump, 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 grabs his shotgun and fires at the coffin. Pow, pow, pow! Still, the coffin follows him. Desperate, the man locks himself in the bathroom, knowing that the coffin would soon break down this door as well. The man, not wanting to give up, grabs a bottle of cough syrup and hurls it at the coffin. The bottle shatters, covering the coffin. And (coughs) the coffin (laughs) stopped. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That was a good one, Benny. Oh my God. That was way funnier than I thought. You guys want to help me get more wood now? I'll help you, Tom. Sure, Tom. If everyone else is going, I guess I have to. I saw a bunch of wood just up the trail a bit. Well, let's go. It should be right in this area. Hey, guys. Who is that? Don't know, Kathy. Maybe another camper? (laughs) I don't think so, Joe. That person has to be close to seven foot tall. Excuse me, sir. Sir? Is everything okay? Be careful, Tom. I'll be fine. Sir, do you need any help? Are you hungry, friend? Hey, where did he go? He was right there. (gasps) He just vanished. Let's head back to camp, guys. Stay close, guys. Let's go. The Dark Watchers are described as tall, sometimes giant-sized, featureless, dark silhouettes. They often are seen with large, brimmed hats or walking sticks. They appear to just watch travelers, though no one has ever seen one up close. And when they do try to see them, the Watchers disappear before anyone can even get close. Even though the Watchers have appeared since the Spanish settlers first moved to the area, Not much is known about these strange entities. Maybe one day we'll find out more about them. Or perhaps not. Ah, well, our next story is just as strange as the last. For this tale, let's head over to Santa Paula. Hurry up, we have to get home. I'm already going fast, I'm doing almost 40. 40? Don't let your father know that. I think we're getting close. (coughs) There's so much dust. (coughs) Told you I was going fast. Why did we come out here near the farm? We need to do a little research. On whether or not you have a small brain? (sighs) Chuck, tell your sister to be quiet. You tell her, she never listens to me. Well... 
Why are we out here? I told you to do a little research first. Do you think the stories are true? Only one way to find out. And just why do I have to be here? Because you're my little sister and I have to keep an eye on you. Yeah, well, who's supposed to be keeping an eye on you? We're planning on using you as the bait. What? No! I'm not going on that farm. It's a ranch, you yuck. Ouch! Ah! Watch it, you fathead! There it is. Okay, the plan is, Linda, you go up to the barn. Charles, you go up to the silo. And what are you going to do? I'm going to stay here and watch out for anything. What, are you chicken? I'm not chicken. Someone just needs to keep watch, that's all. Why not let Linda keep watch? I got this. She has specs. What is she going to see? Come on, Charles. Samuel's just a schnook. Let's go see if we can find some diapers. He's going to need them. (laughs) (laughs) I can't believe you guys bringing me out here. I doubt we're going to see anything anyways. Your friend back there is a big chicken. I know. Why do you hang out with him then? Because he has a car. That's your reason? Well, the barn is that way. The silo's this way. Just yell if you see anything. You two see anything yet? Nothing yet. You see anything, Linda? I see a... Chicken! (laughs) Keep looking! What are we even looking for? Footprints, claw marks, anything from the monster. Samuel, it's behind you! Samuel, run! Charlie, over here! I'm coming, Linda! Wait for me! Should we wait for him? He'll, he'll, he'll catch up! Yeah, who is... Milking cows, anyway. Guys, wait up! (laughs) The Billywhack Monster started out as a story dating back to the 1940s. As the story goes, the monster was a tall humanoid with long claws and gray hair wrapped around its ram-like horns. Today, the Billywhack Dairy is run down, considering it was once a state-of-the-art dairy farm. It was started in 1924 by a veteran of World War I. Legend has it that the owner was performing experiments in the tunnels underneath the dairy for the Office of Strategic Services. The OSS was officially disbanded after the end of World War II, but was soon started again as the Central Intelligence Agency. Whether the original owner created the monster, or if it was just a ploy to keep the kids off his land, we might not never know. (laughs) Well, the last known sighting was in the 1960s. Was the government working on something secret? I'm sure you know the answer. Let's go to Stowe Lake, the largest body of water at the Golden Gate Park. Don't run away too far, Margaret. Okay, Mother. Don't get your dress all dirty either. We have to be all ladylike for whenever we get back home to your father. I understand, Mother. Annette, let her be a kid. She has to learn how to be a young lady, Helen. Well, can you tell me how to be one? (laughs) 
You are a great lady for your man. I'm not much of a lady. I haven't even been able to bear a child yet. Helen, don't fret about it. You will soon. We've been trying for two years now. It can take a little time sometimes. It didn't for you. You have two kids in two tries. We were lucky. I want to have a little Margaret, or Lillian, or maybe even a little boy. Mother, may I go over by the other little girls? It's not polite to interrupt, honey. I'm sorry, Mother. It's okay, Annette. No, it's not okay. This young lady needs to be taught her manners. Mother, I'm sorry. We will let your father decide your punishment when we get home. Mother, I said I was sorry! Annette, the child is sorry. I will decide whether or not the child is sorry. Please, please, Mother! Come here, little girl. You sit here and be quiet and don't move. I think you're being a little rough with the girl. She has to learn! Well, you making a scene is not helping here. If you don't like the way I parent my child, you can leave. Annette, you made her cry. She made herself cry. I'm sorry, Margaret. What are you sorry for? She interrupted us. I think the kids have been keeping you up too much. (sighs) Maybe they have. Why don't we start heading back? Our husbands will be home soon. Let me grab Lillian. Oh, no. What's wrong? Lillian? I don't see Lillian. Sir, Hmm? have you you seen my child? Sorry, ma'am. No, I haven't seen any child. Have you seen my child? Sorry, ma'am, I haven't seen her. Have you seen my child? No, ma'am, sorry. Excuse me, but have you seen my child? You actually lost your child? You must be some kind of lousy parent. I'll... I'll go check by the lake! The story of the White Lady has been told in many different fashions, but the story remains the same with a baby and the woman drowning in the water. Sometimes you can see the woman still looking for her child on the lake's edge. Legend has it, if she speaks to you and you say that you have seen the child, she will haunt you. And if you say no, she'll get angry and end your life. (laughs) Wow. What would you say if asked? Our next story is a short tale, but it is one that needs to be told. We are going to Los Angeles. Thank you for the trip, Robert. The time away was really good. Hopefully my work didn't interrupt your time in San Diego. It was fine. I spent most of my time at the hotel pool. I'm sure you had all the guys flocking all over you. Not exactly. They were all gentlemen. They were all there with their families. Hmm. We should go back there. Maybe get a suite. Ooh, that would be nice. Maybe we could get all dressed up and go to a nice restaurant. Or we could just eat in the room. I want to thank you again for this trip, Robert. I really did have a good time. Anytime, Elizabeth. And seriously, I really liked the idea of food and bed. Maybe you could leave that wife of yours, and then we could have food and bed all the time. Oh, we wouldn't just be eating in bed then, would we? Oh, Robert, stop that. I'm not that type of lady. Well, I don't know. Last night and this morning tells me differently. 
Oh, stop it. You know when you start rubbing my legs, I start getting all wild. Oh, I know. It's why I do it. As much as I want to stay with you, I'm supposed to meet my sister later on. She's coming in from Boston. We're already at your hotel anyways. Will I see you tomorrow? Do the birds sing? (laughs) I love how you shape your mouth when you talk. (laughs) How about when I kiss you? Afternoon, Miss Short. Afternoon, Miss Short. Any messages? Your sister called. Said she is running late and will meet you at Crown Grill. Thank you. I think I'll go upstairs and change. I think you look ravish in the way you dress now. Thank you. But I have this really nice dress I want to try on. Going up, Miss Short? Yes, thank you. Nice weather we're having. It is nice, isn't it? Oh yes, it is the perfect day to go for a walk in the park. Maybe I'll do just that. Well, this is your floor. See you again, Miss Short. Thank you. dress, but first, some music? This one is so gorgeous. There's no way he wouldn't leave her once he sees me in this. Oh. Oh, this really is my color. Oh. Ooh. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looking good, Liz. Oh, I know the perfect lipstick color. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Oh, mwah. Robert, can you be with her over me? Ah, look at this. I look so good. (laughs) Oh, this dress is worth Every penny. Oh, oh, I'm glad I got those shoes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I wish I found this a few days ago. It would have been perfect for Robert to see me in. Oh, how I wish Robert could see me in this dress. You look very nice this evening. Thank you. Are you going to enjoy an evening out on the town? (laughs) That's the plan. Oh, well, I wish you luck. Thank you. Evening, Miss Short. Do you want me to get you a cab? Oh, no, thank you. I'll walk. (laughs) Enjoy your evening, Miss. (laughs) 
Euripides once said, when love is in excess, it brings a man no honor nor worthiness. The story you just heard was based on known facts. On the morning of January 15th, 1947, Elizabeth Short's body was found naked and severed in two pieces. Her body was completely severed at the waist and drained of blood. Her face was also slashed by her killer from her ears to her mouth. The lower part of her body was a foot away from her upper half. Her intestines were positioned neatly under her buttocks. Her corpse was posed with her hands above her head, elbows bent at 90 degrees, and her legs split. The media nicknamed her the Black Dahlia. Over 200 suspects were brought in for questioning, but no one was ever arrested. Since her death in 1947, over 500 people have confessed to that murder. Will we ever find out what happened to this aspiring actress? <laughs> I doubt it, but you just never know. Last stop for the evening takes us to a bridge in Pasadena. <laughs> What a beautiful day to go for a walk. I'm happy that you decided to take the day off. Even police need a day off every now and then. We should go to Brookside today. That's a great idea. We can stop and look at all the lovely flowers. Looking is fine. Just, ugh, just don't be buying anymore. We already have a house full of them. I thought you liked the flowers. I do. It's just... Well, they are so much to take care of. It gives me something to do while you're at work. You have a lot of time now that Thomas has moved out, don't you? Yeah, I do. I miss him. He still comes over during the holidays. I know. It's just different, though. Well, he's a man now. He has his own family to take care of. I know. He didn't have to move away, though. You know full well the army needed him in Hawaii. Well, they didn't ask for my permission. The army doesn't need to ask you for permission, Lorraine. Ah, it's his job. He could fix airplanes here just as well as there. I just don't understand why they took my boy away. They didn't take him away. Ah, he volunteered, remember? It's those lunatic friends of his. They tricked him somehow. As I recall... All his friends are still here. I don't think they tricked him. I fought. You know, he was probably following in my footsteps. But when you fought in the war, I thought you said there weren't going to be any more wars. Oh, I hope not. That guy in Europe is trying to start one, though. Well, I don't think we'll get involved with that one. Yeah, yeah, it would take something big for us to join that war. Better leave it over there, I think. Do you miss him, Lewis? He's my son. Of course I miss him. We should go to Hawaii then and surprise him. Uh-uh. I'm not getting on an airplane. Man was not meant to fly, no siree. Oh, I don't know. I suspect one day we'll reach the moon. Oh, Lorraine, you're crazy. We will never get to the moon. I believe we will. How about taking a boat then? Now there's an idea. We could take a boat. How long do you think it'd take? It would take a couple of days, maybe even a week. I don't know if we can afford for me to take that much time off. It's our son. We need to find a way. Maybe you could get another job. You want me to work two jobs? You already say that you don't see me enough, Lorraine. It would just be for a short time. Don't you think it's worth it? What if you stop buying flowers? I'll stop buying flowers if you stop smoking. So, what job should I get? <coughs> Maybe you could help deliver flowers. Nighttime flower delivery. I'm sure there's something you can do. Hey, maybe I could help at the docks. <laughs> Lewis, isn't that a young man's job? 
Are you trying to say I'm not young anymore? You are still plenty young enough for me. <laughs> what are you going to do? Get rid of me once I get too old? I'll never get rid of you. Well, goodness. Ain't that a relief. <laughs> oh, Lewis. Is that a woman? Oh, my. Did she just throw her baby off the bridge? Ma'am, hey, hey, stop, ma'am. Do something, Lewis. She's going to jump. Please, 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 stop. Ma'am, what are you doing? What do we do? I, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. It, it, uh, I don't think there's much we can do. Wait, 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 wait. I think I hear the baby crying. Hurry, save the child! Get to the house and call the police, Lorraine. What are you going to do? I'm going to see if the child is okay. The pepper trees below the bridge broke the baby's fall. The child was injured, but survived. Sadly, the woman wasn't so lucky. She died a painful death, shattering her pelvis and rupturing her spleen. Unfortunately, her death was one of many that has happened on that bridge. Since construction ended in 1913, there have been over 150 suicides on this bridge. On average, 30 people a year attempt to jump from the Colorado Street Bridge. Most are talked down, but others still take the leap. From 1926 to 1940, this bridge was a part of the historic Route 66. People from the area can't imagine the stories of this beautiful bridge. This also happens to be one of the most haunted areas in California. There are stories of a woman who jumps off a bridge but disappears before hitting the ground, and about a man who approaches visitors, whispering that it was her fault, even though we have no idea who she is. Well, looks like time's up. Thank you for talking with me. Sometimes all you need to do is talk. <laughs> In fact, I'm getting on a plane to talk to some people at the Stanley. I wonder if I'll meet a king. I hope to see you there. And remember, although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of overcoming it. Take care now. <laughs> As the leading cause of death in the United States, suicide was responsible for nearly 46,000 deaths. In 2020, it was estimated that 12.2 million adults seriously thought about suicide, 3.2 million made a plan, and 1.2 million attempted it. Suicide is a serious public health problem that can have lasting harmful effects on individuals, families, and communities. There are many factors that contribute to suicide, and the goal of suicide prevention is to reduce factors that increase risk and increase factors that promote resilience. If you are ever having difficult thoughts, please call 988 or 911, and people will get you the help that you are looking for. Please, there are people out there who want to help. Thank you for listening. <laughs>